Okay, in this question, we are told the following. We are told that figure five represents a network of roads. Here's figure five. The number on each arc represents the length in miles of a corresponding road. A large crane is required at J. So you need a large crane there. And it may be transported from either C1 or C2. So from C1 or C2. A route of minimum length is required. It is decided to use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest routes between C1 and J and between C2 and J. Explain why J rather than C1 or C2 should be uh, chosen as a starting vertex. Well, this relies on us understanding what Dijkstra's algorithm actually achieves. Now, Dijkstra's algorithm, if we start at a given point, let's say we start at C1 and we performed a Dijkstra's algorithm, it would tell us the shortest route uh, from C1 to all of those points. Now, if we wanted to find the shortest route between C1 and J, we'd have to do a Dijkstra starting at C1 all the way to J. If we wanted the shortest distance from C2 to J, we'd have to start at C2 and do a different Dijkstra's. However, if we were clever and did the Dijkstra starting at J, which is the reverse route, it in one go would show us the shortest distance to C1 from J and C2 from J. And we can just reverse that route to find the quickest from this side to this side. So that's why it's better and we just state for part A, I might actually move this down a little bit, for part A we just state um, starting at J at J means you would only, you would only have to perform Dijkstra's once. Only have to perform Dijkstra's once. And we could just put in brackets, we could put and not twice, and not twice, as would be the case. starting from C1 and C2, which you'd have to do in two separate uh, Dijkstra's algorithms. So that's nice and simple for one mark there. Then it says, use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest route, state your route and its length. So we're gonna start from J, okay? We're gonna start from J. And J is the first one we label, and it's got no distance from J to itself. Okay, so we're going to, from this one we've just labelled, we're going to say, how do we get to all the ones from it? So we can go 15 here, so we're going to write, we could get there in 15, we could get here in 16, or we could get here in 33. Okay, and we're going to look at the smallest out of all of these, and the smallest is this one. So this would be number 2, and we'll label that a permanently label final value 15. Now we go from here to all the ones we can possibly go to. Don't go back to another permanent. So we could go along here another 14, which would be 29. Or we could go along here 30, which would give us 45. There's no other places we could go. Now we look at the smallest at 29, 45 and 16. And this is the smallest. So this is number 3 and it has a final value of 16. Now we go from here. We could go up here, 12, which would that would be 28, or we could go along here and 16 add 25 is equal to 51. Okay, now we look at all the smallest, out 45, 28, 16, uh, so it's not 16, 45, 28 and 51, which is clearly this one. So this would be number 4 and this would be 28. So now we go from here. We could go 28 add 12, which would be 40. We could go 28 add 6, which would be 34. Or we could go 28, add 14, which would be equal to 42. Uh, now the smallest out of these here is this one. So this would be number 5 and 34. So we could, from here, uh, we could go up uh, 7, uh, which would bring us to 41. Or we could go down 5, which would bring us to 39. And we can also go across here from this one. So add 16 to 34 and you would get 50, and add, six, add 17 to 34, and you'd get 51. Now we look at the smallest out of 41, 39, 50, and 51. 39 is the smallest, so this will be number 6, and be 39. Now we go 39, add 9, 
which would be equal to 48. And there's nowhere else to go that's not a permanent, so that's it. We look at 41, 51 and 48. This is the smallest, so this would be number 7, 41. We can't go along here, so 41 at 8 is 49. And that's the only place to a non-permanent we could go. And the smallest out of these two is 48. So this would be number 8, and that would be uh, 48. And this, therefore, would have to be number 9, and it would be permanently labelled uh, at 49. This is Dijkstra's algorithm, and it says find the shortest route to transport the crane, state your uh, route and its length. Now let's just be super careful here. Remember that we wanted uh, to the, we wanted to deliver the crane to J. So we want to decide which one of these we should start from. Now because from J to um, C2 is the shortest, it's 48, we're going to start from C2. So let's just check what we have to see. We have to say the shortest route and state your route and its length. So let's just determine the route. If we're taking this one because it's 48, it's the smallest. 48 take away 9 is 39, so we must have taken this path. 39 take away 5 is 34, we must have taken this. 34 take away 6 is 28, we must have taken this. 28 take away 12 is 16, we must have taken this. And 16 take away 16 is 0, so we must have taken this. So be very careful here to state the route the right way. We are not going from J to C2. We're going from C2 to J. It's just we did it this way because part A said we'd only have to do it once. So the root is C2 to E to F to G to I and to J. And the length, well, it's just the number here, which is equal to 48 miles. Okay, and we're done for this question. Be super careful there. That last bit is a bit tricky and a lot of students would have lost marks there.